the limit we would like to compute for this problem is the limit as x goes to a, a number, the number 1, of a rational function. So in general, uh, when we are, whenever we are going to a particular number, the first thing we try is plugging in and seeing what happens. So what we do here is we plug this uh, value of 1 in, and on the top we would get 1 minus 1, which would be 0. On the bottom, we would get uh, 1 squared minus 2 times 1 plus 1. So that would be 1 minus 2 plus 1. That would also be 0. Getting the uh, indeterminate form of 0 over 0 tells us that we need to factor, cancel, and then try again. So we do see that the, the top is already as simple as it can be in that it's just a linear factor already, but the bottom can be factored. We do also know that since we had a 0 on the bottom as x went to 1, we should see the factor x minus 1 appearing on the bottom also. And actually that uh, factor x minus 1 appears on the bottom twice because that uh, denominator is a perfect square um, of x minus 1 times itself. And so after we have factored, the next thing we want to do is uh, cancel out the common factors using the cancellation property there. And uh, we have one copy of x minus 1 on top and two copies of it on the bottom. So we have a leftover copy on the bottom. So after we have canceled, we always try plugging in again to see what happens, but realize that we have removed the problem factor from the top, but it's still sitting there in the bottom. So this time we have a 1 over 0. 1 over 0 is actually not indeterminate. We have a method for being able to figure out what 1 over 0 is, but the problem is we need to know which sign um, that 0 ate up for um, coming in from the left as well as coming in from the right because it, de it depends on whether um, when we're looking at the one-sided limits whether we have a negative sign tacked on to that zero or a positive sign tacked on. And so right here the non-zero number over a zero is telling us we must go to one-sided limits. That is the next step. It doesn't mean that the answer is does not exist. It doesn't mean that the answer is infinity. It means we've got to work harder to determine what the answer is. We can get there, but we've got to work a bit harder. So what we'll do is we'll do uh, the limit from the left. So limit as x goes to 1 um, with a little minus sign there. And we can go ahead and um, look at the reduced form here. So we got as far as looking at uh, this this reduced form, the 1 over x minus 1. So that's where we're going to um, start here. We can always reduce here. So when we uh, compute this limit, we have the 1 on the top and we plug in, I'm going to go ahead and put in the 1 minus there on the bottom in place for the x, just so that I can do this um, arithmetic better. So when we have 1 minus, we're thinking of things slightly smaller than 1. So perhaps like we could think in our head 0.9. If we have 0.9 minus 1, we land into the negative side of things. And so the sign that 0, 8, when it came in from the left, is a negative sign. So we have a positive constant on top, 0, 8, a negative uh, value there. And so we've got um, a negative overall. So that negative is what's getting attached to infinity because we really do think of zero and the infinities as being kind of reciprocals of each other. So whenever we're dividing by zero, we're really blowing that fraction up to either positive infinity or down to negative infinity. And being able to assess which sign gets attached to that zero helps us determine which infinity it is. So there from the left, we are approaching negative infinity, and now we've got to figure out what's happening to the right. So we look at the limit as x goes to 1 from the positive side of things, and when we do, we plug in the 1 plus this time in the bottom, and we've got uh, the 1 on top, and in the bottom we've got something slightly bigger than 1, so we could think in our heads maybe 1.1. Um, subtracting 1 out from that leaves us in the positive realm of things, so we have a 0 with a little plus sign attached. So we have a positive constant on top, 0 8 a positive value, positive over positive would be positive, and so that tells us which infinity we're looking at. 
Again, division by zero blows it up to one of the infinities, and now we've determined it's the positive one. So after we've looked at these two one-sided limits, now we are ready to make our assessment. Since these do not match, what our answer is, is that the limit does not exist. But you can only arrive at the conclusion that the limit does not exist by um, going through this process. Just simply getting a 1 over 0 does not, um, does not tell you yet that the limit does not exist. Because what happens here in general is when you've looked at the two one-sided limits, if they both happen to be positive infinity, we say the overall limit is positive infinity. If they both happen to be negative infinity, the overall limit is negative infinity. So if the infinities match, that's your answer for the limit. But if they don't match, that's when we are able to assess that the limit does not exist there.